We often talk about concepts like the law of attraction and the law of assumption, but they're all about how you can make good things happen just by thinking positively. But guess what? The real magic behind these ideas is something even simpler. Your identity. Your identity is like the boss of your brain. It's all the stuff you believe about yourself. And here's the kicker. When you change your identity, you change everything. Think about it. If you see yourself as someone who's lucky and successful, you'll start acting like it. You'll take more chances, work harder, and guess what? Good stuff starts happening. We see this magic all around us. Take a look at someone who used to be shy, but now they're confident and outgoing. What changed? Their identity. They started seeing themselves in a new light and suddenly they're a whole new person. Think about someone who was once obese and then became an elite athlete, or a heavy smoker who quit and became a non-smoker, or a student failing English classes who turned into a best-selling author. Stories like these inspire us because they show that changing ourselves and our lives is truly possible. Do you ever feel like your dreams are just too far away to reach? Like they're stuck in a fairy tale, too good to be real? You're not alone. Lots of folks work really hard but still feel like they're not getting anywhere. But here's a secret weapon that could change everything, shifting your identity. Your identity is like the costume you wear every day. It's made up of all the things you believe about yourself. And guess what? You can change it. Yep, just like changing your outfit, you can switch up how you see yourself. Now, here's why this is so amazing. When you start seeing yourself differently, you start acting differently too. It's like flipping a switch in your brain that says, Hey, I can do this. Suddenly, your goals don't seem so far-fetched anymore. When you shift your identity, you change the way you see yourself, which in turn changes the way you act and the outcomes you achieve. This is the secret to transforming your life and reaching your dreams. Identity is a big word that means who you are. It's like a map of beliefs inside our heads that tells us about ourselves. Tony Robbins, a famous speaker, says these beliefs shape our uniqueness. They can be good, bad, or just okay but they all make us who we are. Imagine you're a character in a story. Your identity is like the script that guides your actions and decisions. It sets the rules for how you live and what you think you can or can't do. Tony Robbins explains that your abilities stay the same, but how much you use them depends on what you believe about yourself. So if you think you're good at something, you're more likely to try it. But if you believe you're not capable, you might not even give it a shot. Your identity is like a filter that decides what parts of your potential you get to use. Understanding our identity helps us see why we act the way we do. It's like knowing the recipe for who we are. And just like any recipe, we can change it if we want to. By believing in new things about ourselves, we can unlock new abilities and live fuller lives. So next time you wonder who you are, remember, you're the author of your own story and your identity is the pen you write it with. When we understand our identity in this way, life becomes much more interesting and full of possibilities. Life is like a big treasure hunt filled with surprises and mysteries. And guess what? The biggest treasure of all is you. Yep, your identity holds the key to unlocking all sorts of adventures. Imagine your identity like a treasure map with lots of twists and turns. It's not just one path. It's like a whole bunch of highways stretching out in front of you. Each highway represents a different version of yourself, a different way you could be. Now picture this. You're standing at the start of all these highways, and they're all leading to different places. Some might take you to exciting new jobs, others to deep friendships or incredible adventures. It's like having a hundred different destinies waiting for you. But here's the best part. You get to choose which highways to explore. You're the captain of your own ship, steering towards the paths that excite you the most. Some might call these paths your destiny or your highest potential. Whatever you call it, it's all about discovering the amazing person you can be. By shifting your identity, you change the reality you experience. This means that if you change the way you see yourself, you can open up new possibilities and opportunities that were previously out of reach. 
Understanding and applying this concept can help you transform your life and reach your fullest potential. So let's explore how you can shift your identity and begin to create the reality you desire. As Frederick Dodson explains, there is a lot of scientific evidence showing that when someone changes their identity, their reality changes too. Here is an extreme example. Studies on multiple personality disorder have shown that when a person shifts from one identity to another, dramatic changes can happen. In these studies, people have lost 20 pounds in just a few days. Facial scars have disappeared completely only to return when they switch back to their original identity. And even their voices, memories and appearance can change within minutes. But shifting your identity doesn't just change your body. It changes your entire experience. Science might eventually admit that since the outside world is connected to our consciousness, changing who you are also changes your external reality. When you understand this, you realize that using affirmations and visualizations to try to change something outside of yourself can be overly complicated and unnecessary. Instead, by shifting your identity, you directly change your world. This approach can simplify and enhance your efforts to create the life you want. Neville Goddard explains this well when he says, If man's concept of himself were different, everything in his world would be different. His concept of himself being what it is, everything in his world must be as it is. You can't rely on willpower or motivation alone to reach your goals, because most of your actions come from subconscious beliefs about your identity. Have you ever stopped to think about all the things you've been told throughout your life? Stuff like what you're good at, how you should act, or what's possible for you? Well, here's the thing. All those messages have shaped the person you are today. Think about it. Maybe you were told you're not good at math, so you stopped trying. Or perhaps you were told you should always be polite, so you hold back from speaking up. These messages become like little scripts that you follow without even realising it. But here's the kicker. You don't have to stick to those scripts forever. You can rewrite your story anytime you want. Yep, you heard me right. You have the power to decide what's true for you. When you understand this, you realize that changing your identity is key to changing your reality. By shifting how you see yourself, you can open up new possibilities and start living the life you want. Maybe you, like me, were terrible at sports during your school years. You struggled and didn't care to exercise because you saw yourself as unathletic. You might have even hated sports and avoided them at all cost. Now, in your 30s or 40s, you live a sedentary lifestyle because that's how you see yourself. If you set a goal to finish a marathon, your self-image doesn't match that goal. You see yourself as the opposite of a marathon runner, a couch potato. This couch potato identity makes it hard to stick to any workout routine or healthy eating plan you try to follow. No amount of willpower or motivation will create lasting change if your core belief about who you are goes against the new habits you want to adopt. That's why many people end up sabotaging themselves. If you keep telling yourself that you hate exercise, your subconscious will find ways to stop you from making progress in your training. To achieve your goal, you need to change your identity. Start seeing yourself as someone who enjoys exercise and values fitness. When you shift your identity, aligning it with your goals, you can create lasting changes and achieve the things you once thought were impossible. Neville Goddard also talks about changing how you see yourself. He says, The only way to replace your current self-image is by creating a new one. You can do this by imagining an ideal version of yourself and focusing on it until you become that person. If you want to change your identity, you need to understand what you currently believe about yourself. Start by making a list of the labels you use to describe yourself. Then, go through the list and decide which ones are holding you back from achieving your goals. Let's say you're someone who wants to go from being a couch potato to running a marathon. You might have labels like unathletic, hates exercise, and addicted to junk food. Now, think about what labels you would give yourself if you were already a marathon runner. How would you act, think, and feel? Write down these new labels too. 
this will give you a clear picture of your ideal self. By focusing on this ideal version of yourself and practicing behaviors that align with it, you can gradually shift your identity and become the person you want to be. It's a process of rewiring your beliefs and habits to match your goals and aspirations. Now that you know what your ideal self looks like and how they think, it's time to become that person. Many people get this process mixed up. Maybe you think you'll feel fit and healthy after you finish your marathon, but the key is to start feeling and acting like that person right now. You have to shift your identity in the present moment. Only by embodying the qualities of the person who can achieve your goal will you have a real chance of reaching it. So start living as if you've already achieved your goal. Act, think and feel like the person you want to become. This is how you make your new identity a reality. Changing your identity to embrace new behaviours and thoughts can be challenging. After all, you've been comfortable with your old identity for many years. If you've seen yourself as someone who dislikes exercise for two decades, it won't change overnight to someone who loves it. This is where visualization techniques, affirmations and daily journaling can be really helpful. These tools can help reprogram your subconscious mind and reshape your self-image by reminding yourself daily of the person you want to become, the one who can achieve your goals and live the life you desire. You start to reinforce your new identity. Ever heard the saying, actions speak louder than words? Well, when it comes to changing your identity, it's totally true. Thinking differently is a good start, but if you really want to make it stick, you've got to walk the walk too. Imagine you've decided to become a morning person. You've been telling yourself, I'm an early riser now. But if you keep hitting the snooze button every morning, guess what? You're not really living up to that new identity. So, here's the secret sauce. Take action. Every single day, do something that lines up with your new identity. If you want to be a morning person, set your alarm and actually get out of bed when it rings. If you want to be more confident, practice speaking up in meetings or trying new things. This combo of rewiring your brain and taking action is like a one-two punch for change. You're not just telling yourself you're different, you're proving it to yourself with every step you take. Sure, it might feel uncomfortable at first, change usually does. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. Before you know it, your new identity will feel like second nature. As you continue this process, you'll notice changes in your outer reality too. You'll start achieving the goals you've set for yourself and living the life you once only dreamed of. It's a journey of transformation that begins with changing how you see yourself and then taking consistent steps to become that person. An identity shift occurs when you decide to change who you are moving closer to the person you truly want to be. It's like giving yourself a makeover from the inside out, reshaping your self-image and your life. To change your identity, it's essential to start by changing your beliefs about yourself. If you want to become a different person, you need to start believing that you can be that person. Your beliefs shape your actions. So if you continue to act in ways that contradict your new identity, it can lead to internal conflict and confusion. Avoiding an identity crisis is crucial in this process. An identity crisis happens when you feel lost, unsure about who you are, and afraid of the changes ahead. It's like being stuck in a maze with no clear path forward. To avoid this crisis, focus on aligning your actions with your desired identity. Take small steps every day that reflect the person you want to become. Over time, these actions will reinforce your new identity and help you live a more fulfilling life. Now let's take a look at how an identity crisis can happen and what triggers it. Imagine you see yourself as an honest person, but then you lie to your spouse. Besides feeling guilty about lying, you might also feel shocked because it goes against your belief about who you are. This can make you question whether you truly understand yourself. Sometimes an identity crisis isn't caused by the actions you take, but by the experiences you go through. A common example is the midlife crisis, which occurs when you struggle to accept that you're getting older. 
This can happen when you notice changes in your body or when someone treats you differently because of your age. Whenever your identity is linked to something that can change, like your age, appearance or job, it's likely that you'll face an identity crisis at some point. It's a natural part of life as you navigate through different stages and experiences. Now, how we can make an identity shift happen? To start, it's important to avoid falling into an identity crisis. If you want to change your behaviour, the key is to change your identity first, so it matches the behaviour you want to have. Your identity is made up of your beliefs about yourself, so you can use the same strategies I've discussed for changing beliefs to do this. For instance, if your goal is to lose weight and get stronger, you need to let go of the identity of being overweight and believing that this is just who you are. Instead, adopt the belief that you are a healthy person. With this new identity, when faced with a choice between a donut and oatmeal, you'll be less tempted to choose the donut because it doesn't align with who you see yourself as anymore. Instead, you'll choose oatmeal because it supports your identity as someone who values health and longevity. By changing your identity first, you set yourself up for success in changing your behaviours and achieving your goals. It's a powerful way to reshape your habits and create a healthier, happier life for yourself. Sometimes, you don't have to completely change your old identity. Instead, you can expand it to include new beliefs and characteristics that align with your goals. Your current identity might not be stopping you from achieving what you want in life, except that it lacks certain beliefs. As long as the beliefs and traits you want to add don't clash with who you are now, you can choose to expand your identity to include them. This way, you avoid causing an identity crisis. For example, let's say you're an ambitious introvert who dreams of becoming a top-selling realtor. You don't have to give up being introverted or your dream. Instead, you can become an ambitious introvert who is also confident, friendly and knowledgeable about architecture and design. By expanding your identity in this way, you embrace new qualities while still staying true to who you are. It's a way to grow and evolve without losing sight of your authentic self. Interestingly, while you can't change the way you act without changing how you see yourself, you also can't change your identity without adjusting your actions to support it. If you want to shift your identity, you need to start by changing what you believe about yourself. Then, you have to reinforce those beliefs through your actions. In simpler terms, the more you behave like the person you want to become, the more you'll actually become that person. It's like walking the walk instead of just talking the talk. This is the secret to making a real change in your identity. So take a moment to think about who you are now and who you want to be. Then use these steps to shift your identity in the direction you desire. By following these steps, you can start to become the person you've always wanted to be. To start, Take a moment to relax and open your mind. Then, ask yourself a simple question. Who am I? Write down whatever thoughts come to mind. Repeat this process a few times, jotting down whatever pops into your head. Keep going until you find something that feels right to you. If you're still struggling to figure out who you are, try this exercise. Imagine there's an entry about you in a dictionary. What would it say? Or think about creating an ID card that truly reflects who you are. What information would it include? Would it have your photo, physical description, beliefs, affiliations, motto, aspirations, abilities and accomplishments? Consider what feels true to you and what doesn't. Next, take some time to think about the identity you've just written down. Does it make you feel good or bad? If it brings up painful feelings, remember that you're the one who chose to adopt this identity. It doesn't define you and you have the power to change it. Then. Make a list of all the qualities you'd like to have as part of your identity. Think about people who already possess these traits. Now, imagine yourself embodying these qualities. How would it change the way you talk, think and feel? Finally, describe in detail who you want to become with this new identity. What actions, thoughts and emotions do you want this new identity to bring out in you? 
Visualize yourself living as this new version of yourself and think about how it would improve your life. Now, it's time to make a plan for becoming the person you want to be. Think about what actions you need to take to match your new identity. What behaviours would align with this new version of yourself? Consider spending time with friends who support and encourage your growth toward this new identity. Once you've made your plan, commit yourself to this change. Every day, use your new identity to describe yourself, both in your own thoughts and when talking to others. Share your new identity with your friends and family. When you and everyone around you start to see yourself in this new way, you'll start to believe it too. Over time, you'll internalize your new identity and truly become the person you aspire to be. It's interesting to think about how we all have these deeply ingrained ideas about who we are. Our identity plays a crucial role in how we grow and develop as humans. From a young age, we learn to distinguish ourselves from the world around us by discovering what makes us unique. Many of these discoveries become central to our sense of self. The tricky part is that a lot of these ideas were formed when we were very young, maybe around seven years old or even younger. Take a moment to think back to when you were seven and compare that to where you are now in your life. You've likely experienced a lot of growth and change since then. However, your brain still holds on to some of those old ideas from your childhood, and some of them might be holding you back today. These old ideas can turn into limiting beliefs, which are thoughts that hold you back from reaching your full potential. They can also become deeply ingrained parts of your identity. For example, if you grew up watching your parents argue about money, you might have learned certain beliefs about wealth, like thinking that rich people are greedy or evil. These beliefs might still influence how you think about money today, even if you've grown and changed in many other ways since childhood. Now let's think about where you are in life right now. Maybe you're working hard to attract more money and create the abundance you've always wanted, but it seems like those big money goals just keep slipping away from you. It's possible that some of the ideas you heard about money when you were younger have stuck with you and shaped how you see yourself today. Our parents play a big role in shaping who we are. We look up to them and often adopt their beliefs and fears without even realizing it. For example, if you grew up hearing that there are only two types of people, the poor and the rich, you might have internalized the idea that you can't become wealthy. This belief could be holding you back from taking action to improve your financial situation. If you believe deep down that it's impossible for you to move from where you are now to where you want to be financially, it's understandable that you might not put in much effort to change your situation. Your subconscious beliefs have a powerful influence on your actions and decisions. So it's important to identify and challenge any beliefs that are holding you back from reaching your goals. Let's consider another example that you might find relatable. It might not be money that's causing you difficulty. It could be love, success, or something entirely different. But regardless of the specific challenge, the underlying principles remain consistent. You attract into your life what aligns with who you are. So once again, we come back to the question we discussed earlier. Who am I? To answer this question, I encourage you to take a sincere look at your life and acknowledge the role you've played in shaping it. Sometimes we find ourselves tolerating certain situations or circumstances, even if we don't like them, until they become our new normal. Ultimately, if you're truly ready to let go of old patterns and stories in order to manifest the future you desire, you'll also need to let go of your old identity. However, since identity is a complex and multifaceted concept, let's focus today on three specific aspects of your identity that you can start working on changing right now as we continue our conversation. Now, let's start by talking about something called your invisible set point. It might sound a bit strange, but we all have this invisible line that determines how we expect our lives to be. This line includes both the minimum standards we're willing to accept and the maximum standards we aspire to reach. A clear example of this is in our romantic lives. 
We all have certain standards for who we'll date and what kind of relationship we want. Think about it. You probably know someone whose dating standards are much lower than yours. But it's not just about dating. We have similar set points for things like money and career success. Whether your set point is low or high, changing it can be tough. That's because our brains are wired to resist change, even if it's change for the better. To your brain, any kind of change represents a threat, whether it's moving up or down. So, even if you're trying to change your life for the better, your brain might resist because it sees change as a danger. Here's another important point. You become what you're willing to put up with. If you tolerate certain things in your life, it's because you believe that's all you deserve. And if you don't believe you deserve better, you'll never let yourself have better. That's why it's crucial to change how you see yourself at a fundamental level. By changing your perception of yourself, you open the door to receiving more in life. These minimum and maximum standards we set for ourselves are deeply ingrained in our sense of who we are. They shape what we believe we deserve in life. So, if you want to improve your life, it starts with changing these beliefs about yourself. For many of us, our standards and what we believe we deserve in life are set too low. But here's the thing. We're the ones who set these standards, which means we also have the power to raise them. By doing so, we can start feeling worthy of the things we truly want. Take a moment to think about your minimum and maximum standards in different areas of your life, like your job, relationships, wealth and health. For example, maybe you've always believed that a job paying $50,000 a year is the best you can hope for. But what if you challenged yourself to aim for $75,000 a year instead? What if you dared to dream bigger? The same goes for your personal life. Perhaps you've seen someone attractive and immediately thought they were out of your league. But what if you stopped making assumptions like that? What if you started believing that you're deserving of love and happiness in all its forms? Identifying your internal set point can be tricky at first. But once you become aware of it, you can start to adjust it. Gradually, you'll find it easier to raise your standards, both at the lower end, where you set your minimum expectations, and at the higher end, where you set your loftiest goals. Let's talk about another important aspect. Your limitations. In life, you can only achieve what you truly believe you're capable of. If you think you'll fail, you might not even try or give something your best effort. But here's the thing. There's often a big gap between what we think we can do and what we're actually capable of. Many of us limit our potential by only considering what we've already done in the past. We let our past experiences dictate what we believe we can achieve in the future. For example, you might say to yourself, I could never learn to fly a plane. But in reality, with enough training and dedication, you probably could. So why do we tell ourselves we can't do certain things? It all comes down to our subconscious mind's instinct to keep us safe. Trying new things can feel risky, even if there's no real danger involved. Our subconscious mind prefers to stick with what's familiar and known, even if it means missing out on new opportunities and experiences. Let's reflect on something important. Our ability to learn and grow. Each of us has evidence in our own lives that we can pick up new skills and take on new challenges. Yet despite this, we often underestimate our potential. We convince ourselves that we can't learn more about certain topics like money or relationships simply because we haven't done so in the past. But in reality, these limitations are self-imposed. The truth is, we're capable of achieving far more than we realize, even if we've never attempted it before. Once you recognize that your supposed limitations are just beliefs you've adopted about yourself, you'll feel empowered to let go of them and explore your true capabilities. So the next time you catch yourself saying, I could never do that, take a moment to question whether it's really true. Why are you automatically assuming you can't succeed? What might happen if you gave it a try? 
The best way to overcome these self-imposed limitations is to challenge yourself. The more you push yourself out of your comfort zone, the more you'll realize that many of these so-called limitations don't hold true. Remember what we discussed earlier. You attract into your life what aligns with who you are. Remind yourself of this truth regularly, perhaps by writing it down on a sticky note and placing it somewhere you'll see it often. By embracing this mindset, you'll open yourself up to a world of possibilities. Let's consider why it's often challenging to turn our big dreams into reality. We have no trouble imagining what we want for our lives, but actually making those visions come true can be tough. Why is that? Many of us set goals and put in a lot of effort to achieve them. We think, if I just try this new thing or get this new job, then I'll finally reach my goal and feel good about myself. But this approach can feel like trying to push a heavy rock uphill. Despite our focus and effort, we encounter obstacles time and time again. The problem lies in relying solely on external actions to change our circumstances. We believe that if we just keep working harder, things will eventually fall into place. But the real magic lies within us. It's only when we shift our perception of ourselves that we can truly gain the momentum needed to overcome obstacles and reach our goals. If we don't change how we see ourselves, the world around us won't change either. So instead of solely focusing on external actions, we must also focus on changing our internal beliefs and mindset. This shift in perception is what ultimately empowers us to achieve our dreams. Now, if you dive deeper into the process of achieving your goals, you might believe that once you reach your goal, you'll finally feel good. But in reality, you'll only achieve that goal when you already feel good. This takes manifestation and reality creation to the next level, beyond just feeling positive emotions. It's not just about feeling good. It's about embodying the person you want to become. This means shifting your identity to align with your goals. If you don't make this shift, you'll continue to attract the same experiences and outcomes you're currently experiencing. And let's be honest, if you're not fully satisfied with where you are now, that's not very enjoyable. So, it's crucial to go beyond surface-level emotions and truly immerse yourself in the identity of the person you aspire to be, this shift in identity is what will propel you towards achieving your goals and creating the reality you desire. Let's take a moment to reflect. How do you present yourself to the world? What words do you use to describe who you are? Think about it carefully. Now consider who you truly aspire to be. Choose a few words that capture the essence of your future self and focus on embodying those qualities. It's important to understand that this isn't about working hard until you believe it. It's about believing in yourself first and then shifting into the person you want to become. And the best part is, you can start doing this right now, in this very moment, as you're listening to me. Ask yourself, what aspects of your current identity are holding you back from achieving your goals? Who do you need to become in order to create the life you desire? Remember, your current self-image may not align with where you want to be in life. Your past identity has led to your current outcomes. It's time to shed the parts of yourself that aren't serving you and step into the person you truly want to be. Now the idea that your identity is something you can choose. Even though you might have made a lot of those choices when you were young and not thinking about where you wanted to be in life. But here's the thing. You're a conscious creator, and it's time to start intentionally shaping the life you want to live. In his book, Parallel Universes of Self, Frederick Dodson delves into this concept further, particularly when he discusses the transformation of your worldly identity. He describes changing your worldly identity as one of the paths of the wizard. According to Dodson, a true wizard or shaman possesses exceptional abilities in perception, creation and action. This is because they don't operate solely from the perspective of a single personality or identity. Instead, they view the world from the standpoint of their higher self, which encompasses all identities. By altering your identity, you tap into the wisdom of the wizard within you, 
you come to realize that you're not defined by any single identity or reality. You're something much greater and more luminous than a mere collection of interests, surroundings and characteristics. Your personality and identity are constructs of your consciousness, malleable and open to transformation. Let's talk about different ways to change your identity. Frederick Dodson identifies two main forms, extreme identity change and identity change light. Extreme identity change is pretty drastic. It involves completely letting go of your current life and starting over from scratch. This might mean changing your name and job, cutting ties with your family, relocating to a new place, and getting rid of anything that reminds you of your past. On the other hand, identity change light is a bit less dramatic. It involves making smaller adjustments to your identity without completely overhauling your life. Picture this. Not only do you change your name and job, but you also move to a completely different country where they speak a different language. You immerse yourself in a new culture, adopt a different style of dressing, and make an entirely new set of friends. You even develop new daily routines and habits. But here's where it gets even more extreme. After just six months of living this new identity, you decide to abandon it and start all over again as someone else. You repeat this cycle, moving from place to place, reality to reality, each time taking on a new persona with a different past, future and name. These extreme and ultra-extreme forms of identity change require a deep level of self-trust and belief in your ability to create any reality you desire, something that's not commonly found in modern society. If you're not quite there yet in terms of self-trust or belief, you might opt for a less intense form of identity shift. Making such drastic changes would undoubtedly have a big impact on your life. If you were to relocate, change your name and completely transform into a new person, you'd quickly notice that your whole world would shift along with you. Now, let's consider a less extreme option, identity change light. Many people are cautious about change, and they might also doubt their own ability to make things happen through sheer willpower or magic. Now, if you want a simpler way to change your identity, instead of completely changing everything about yourself, you can focus on just one thing at a time. Frederick Dodson has identified several aspects of identity that you can consider changing. These include your name, job, daily routines, relationships with family, friends and enemies, where you live and the things you own. You can write about these in your journal to help you understand and shape your identity. Documents that show who you are, like passports or birth certificates. Things that remind you of your past, such as objects, photos or certificates. Languages and different ways of speaking. Words you use often, common phrases. How you say things, sayings and how you communicate specific features of your body and face, gestures and expressions, hobbies you enjoy, favourite places and things you usually do, and your personality and attitudes. There are things you want, dreams you have and goals you set. There are also things you resist or don't like, and things you're good or not so good at. If you change just one of these things, it can make you feel different and give you new energy. For example, you could try using a different name or making new friends. You can also change who you spend time with, including who you see as enemies. You have the power to switch up your job or where you live. It's even possible to change how you act and talk. Sometimes groups like cults use methods to make people forget who they are and believe in their ideas. But when you change things about yourself, it's more about having fun and exploring your identity. Your core identity is like a mask covering up who you really are inside. Removing this mask can help you reconnect with your true self. When you define yourself too narrowly, you limit your understanding of yourself and others. When you see yourself in others and let go of strict ideas about who you are, it opens up more opportunities. Connecting with your higher self means connecting with all the different possibilities of who you could be. You are everything, and one way to really get this is by changing how you see yourself. 
Just by changing how you see yourself, you'll see big changes in your life. Tony Robbins says that your identity is what helps you grow. We tend to act based on how we see ourselves, even if that view isn't entirely correct. It's because humans really like to be consistent with who they think they are. Since we were young, we've been taught to connect big problems with certain identities, like being lazy or unsuccessful. Consider this. When people say one thing but do another, what do you think of them? We might call them hypocrites or unreliable. These labels aren't flattering, right? You wouldn't want to be seen as inconsistent or untrustworthy. It's important to stay true to who you are and act in line with your beliefs. Imagine if you were seen as unreliable or wishy-washy. That wouldn't feel good, would it? Of course not. That's why when you make a statement about who you are or what you believe, you might feel pressured to stick to it. This pressure can be intense, especially if you've made your beliefs public. You might worry about the consequences of changing your stance later on, but staying consistent with your beliefs can bring great rewards. Sticking to what you say you are is important, right? We admire people who are reliable and trustworthy. Ralph Waldo Emerson even warned against being consistently foolish. But why do we feel the need to stay the same? It's because it helps us avoid feeling bad and makes us feel good. You tend to stick with who you think you are because you don't want to be different from that. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe you're not good at learning, you might not try as hard, and then you don't learn as well. But if you think you can improve your learning methods, you might try new ways to learn. Similarly, if someone believes they're addicted to drugs, they might act in ways that confirm that belief. You have the power to change it. Instead of labelling yourself as a drug addict, understand that this is just a part of your identity, not the whole of who you are. We all crave certainty. The unknown can be scary because it might bring pain. We often choose to stick with the pain we know rather than face the uncertainty of something new. As we start to believe new things about ourselves, our actions tend to reflect those beliefs. Tony Robbins points out that even just one change in how we see ourselves can affect everything about how we operate. Consider this. Doesn't someone dealing with drug addiction think and behave very differently from someone who doesn't? They have different ways of evaluating things, they consistently experience different emotions, and they ask themselves different questions. Consider this. Someone dealing with drug addiction thinks and acts very differently from someone who sees themselves as a leader, a lover, an athlete, or a contributor. They have different ways of thinking, different values guiding their actions, and different beliefs shaped by their experiences. Now, not all changes in identity are as drastic as others, but some are so profound that they completely transform the way a person operates. If you've ever tried to make a change in your life but found yourself stuck in the same pattern, it might be because your identity hasn't shifted enough to support that change. If you've been struggling to make a change in your life and keep falling short, it might be because the change you're trying to make doesn't align with how you see yourself. Making a shift in your identity can lead to significant and quick improvements in your life. Consider how your identity is shaped. Think about who you believe yourself to be. It's like taking a snapshot of yourself and seeing what labels or characteristics you've assigned to yourself over time. Take a moment to really think about who you are. Not how others see you, but who you truly want to be. Your past doesn't have to define you forever. You might have felt stuck because you didn't realize you have the power to change your identity. Are you still the same person you were in the past? So the next time you hear yourself saying, I could never do that, or that's just not me, pause for a moment. Are you limiting yourself? Embrace every chance you get to expand your sense of self. Challenge yourself to do things you never thought possible and let those actions show you just how capable you are. Ask yourself, what more can I become? Who am I evolving into? Now think about your values and dreams and commit to embodying them fully, no matter where you are or what your circumstances. Tell yourself, I will act as if I've already achieved my goals.
I will breathe, move, and interact with others as the person I aspire to be. You're at a crossroads right now. This is your opportunity to make the most important decision of your life. Let go of your past. Take a moment to think about who you are right now. Forget about who you used to be. Who are you in this moment? Who do you want to be? Make this decision thoughtfully and deliberately. You have the power to choose who you are. It's not about what you're going through, but about who you are, because who you are will bring all those experiences into your life. It's quite straightforward. You can switch your identity in a snap. For many people, it involves a long process of self-suggestion and altering their behavior and actions. But deep down, you can change it instantly if you connect with your true self. Hey, you. Yeah, you with the big dreams and the even bigger heart. I've got a message for you. You're capable of so much more than you think. Take a moment to really look at yourself, not just the surface stuff, but the deep down nitty gritty parts of who you are. What do you believe about yourself? What stories have you been telling yourself all these years? You don't have to stick to those old stories. You can rewrite them, transform them into something new and amazing. That's right. You have the power to become the person you've always wanted to be. So go ahead, explore your higher self, Dive deep into your identity and uncover all the hidden gems within. And when you find those beliefs that no longer serve you, toss them out like yesterday's trash. Because here's the truth. You're not limited by who you've been. You're defined by who you choose to become. So dream big, my friend. Dream bigger than you ever thought possible. And then go out there and make those dreams a reality. You've got this. I believe in you. Now it's time for you to believe in yourself. So go ahead. Take that first step. Your amazing future is waiting. Thank you for listening.